Hey guys, what's up? It's Stephanie and welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I wanted to talk about your attire during your clinical rotation. So your white coat attire, uh, your scrubs, whether it's business casual, basically your attire during your clinical year. For those of you who are about to start your clinical rotations, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. So currently about me, real quick, I'm currently a second year PA student. I am hopefully about to graduate soon. I'm currently out of rotations though because of COVID-19, but I've completed the majority of my rotations. I still need three rotations, which are internal medicine, family medicine, and then my elective rotation. But I've done the majority of my rotations. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is that when I was in my clinical rotations and I saw other medical students or residents also, um, I thought this was something that was very, very critical. And so basically what I wanted to discuss is that during your clinical rotations, you want to make sure, that, of course, that you're on your best behavior, right? And this is really, really important because you can get a job offer from the preceptor, the doctor, the physician assistant, whoever is precepting you. You can get a job offer from them. I have to say that I did get a job offer from one of my doctors. It was in psychiatry. Psychiatry doesn't really interest me, but who knows? You know, it might be something that I might consider in the future. And it's something that I told them that I would like to consider maybe in the future if possible. And he was okay with that. But this is why it's really important that you are in your best behavior, okay? Best behavior, what does that mean? Basically, you want to make sure that you're there on time, okay? You go there every day, you show up every day, and you show interest when you're in your clinical rotations. I know some of my preceptors or even the medical staff, like the medical assistants, they would complain stating that some of the students were just there. They didn't really show interest. They didn't show interest to touch and see the patient or ask questions. They were just there. So just make sure that you are showing interest during your clinical rotations. It's really, really important. Even if it's a rotation that you don't like. For example, for me, when I started my clinical rotations, I was definitely not looking forward to psychiatry or OB-GYN. And I really enjoyed my OB-GYN rotation. And during my psychiatry rotation, it was a difficult rotation, but like I said, I got offered a job towards the end. So even if you don't like that rotation, then definitely do not show it in clinic, okay? Because who knows, you might like the rotation at the end once you're done. And you might get offered, not offered a job. So always make sure that you're showing interest, whether it is by asking questions or making that intent on seeing the patient. I know for me, when I first started my rotations, I was so scared to touch a patient. I was so scared to perform a physical exam on a patient. But no, you want to make sure that you're out there and you're taking that initiative to go and see the patient. You're taking that initiative to read the labs for the patient, to write a diagnostic treatment for the patient. It's something that preceptors will see. And for example, from a pediatric doctor, he would always ask the medical assistants. And the medical assistant would tell me, like, does she, does it look like she want to learn? Does she really want to learn? Because some of previous students, like I said, they had no interest or they didn't show interest at all. So that's why it's really important that you show interest. Also, be nice to the medical assistants and the nurses. I know some of the MAs that I went with and I wrote today with, they would uh, tell me that they would be upset with some of the previous students because they were mean. Uh, they would belittle them or just ignore them. And that shouldn't be the case, guys. As a your student, you're learning. The doctor is giving you the chance or the privilege for you to be working with them. They don't have to be doing that. The medical assistants will help you also. And sometimes with the medical assistants, if you're mean to them, they're not going to help you in clinic. And I've noticed that during my clinical rotations, that medical assistants will help you if you are nice to them, if you're good to them, if they see that you want to learn. And they've helped me out a lot. Almost every rotation I have to say, medical assistants and nurses have helped me out so much. I know during like my pediatric rotation, for example, my doctor would pit me sometimes in front of the patients. He would ask me questions and the patients felt bad for me because I didn't know the answer. So the patient would try to help me and they would answer for me. And the doctor would tell him like, no, I'm asking her. And then the medical assistant, since she had been following him around for, you know, every day and she had seen the previous students that were with him, she knew what questions he would ask. So she already knew the answer and she would whisper it and I would answer it and he'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's how you know that you are nice to your medical assistants, guys, okay? They are very helpful. They are a great, they're great knowledge. I mean, some of the MAs that I was with, I'm like, you should be in PA school because they knew their dosages like the, like this. They knew their medications. They knew how to do so many procedures, whether it was putting injections, whether it was removing staples, removing stitches. I mean, a lot of things that you learn in, in during your didactic year, and I'm 
still don't feel comfortable doing, they were like on top of it. And they can teach you so much for every rotation, whether it's my ob -GYN rotation, whether it's my pediatric rotation, my surgical rotation, etc. So you want to make sure that you are nice to them, okay? Also, how you present yourself, how are you dressed, really says a lot about you. If your hair is like all over the place, I know like during certain rotations you'll be exhausted, like during my surgery rotation, but I don't think that's an excuse to have like your hair all over the place or not groomed at all. Or your white coat just disgusting because you haven't washed it. Or I would see some of some students that would have their scrubs and they had like dandruff on their scrub. Or they, their scrubs were just wrinkled, they weren't clean. That's why we want to make sure that you're on your best behavior and also you're dressed appropriately. You know, iron your scrubs, clean your scrubs, do your hair. I know certain rotations, I mean, you don't have to have it all fancy like, like how, I mean, down like I have it, make sure you curl it or anything like that. No. I know, for example, for some of my rotations, I didn't have time. So for my surgery rotation, most of the time my hair was up. But I made sure that my hair was up and it was neat. It wasn't like all over the place. And I made sure that my white coat was also ironed and was clean. I know sometimes it's really hard to keep your white coat ironed and clean. I would have to say that because during my pediatric rotation, I got a lot of stuff on it. I had pen marks all over it. But, you know, take care of it. Uh, take care of your clothing. If your preceptor tells you to wear business casual, then wear business casual. For me, I love to wear scrubs. I don't like wearing business casual. But if my preceptor or the doctor I'm with prefers that, then I'm going to wear business casual clothing, okay? So make sure that you are on your best behavior. I can't say that enough. You are dressed appropriately. Your hair is neat, okay? Also, if you can, minimize your, um, your makeup, okay? And also, don't wear any low-cut low shirts. It's something that we always got chastised in our program because some of the preceptors would complain about some other students, female students, that would wear very low-cut shirts or very tight clothing or even like very short skirts, okay? And then comfortable shoes. If it's ca business casual, then wear comfortable shoes. You're going to be walking up and down. I mean, if you can do it in, in, in heels, I mean, good for you. But I know for me, I can't do that. Even during my... Uh, clinical rotation and surgery, I had tennis shoes on and I had sneakers. And I mean, that's fine because most of the surgeons I'm with, they wear sneakers, but they were very, very uncomfortable because you were standing for a long time, especially during surgeries. My surgeon specialized in mastectomies. And so those would take a long time. They would take about four hours if the plastic surgeon went in there also. And, um, so for that rotation, I ended up going and purchasing shoes that were comfortable. I also ended up purchasing uh, elastic socks so that my feet wouldn't hurt because my feet were killing me by the end of the day because I was standing the entire time. So, you know, for different rotations, of course, you have to change what, whether it's your clothing or your shoes, but always be comfortable, guys. Be comfortable. And yeah, that's basically wanted to say, what I wanted to say about starting clinical rotations. Be on your best behavior, okay? If you can, prepare yourself for the rotation. I know for my ENT rotation, which I only did one week, I still have, I still have to finish it. That's my elective rotation. I know, for example, for that rotation, I made sure I read a, a textbook before I started that rotation. It wasn't a huge textbook. It was about 300 pages because I wanted to make sure I familiarize myself with basically the anatomy of the ear, what I'm looking for when I'm looking inside the ear, the throat, etc. So if you have time and then you can, definitely prepare yourself for that rotation because it'll make pimping a lot easier. And then if you're in clinic and you're completely lost because you don't know what's going on, it'll make that also easier. For example, for your physical exams, for ob -GYN, make sure you watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to perform a pelvic exam appropriately. That way you don't hurt the patient when you do your first pelvic exam. Also, whether it is your ER rotation, make sure you are very familiar with how to move stitches, how to place stitches, how to anesthetize locations, how to use a needle, because you will definitely be doing that. So better prepare yourself if you can for the rotation. Alright guys, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. As always, if you guys have any comments, make sure you comment below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!